What's up YouTube? Thanks for watching last week's episode of the BGJ vlog. Uh, we're back. New week, new episode. So like I, uh, like I promised, uh, every four weeks we're going to do some sparring analysis. So that's exactly what we're going to do this week. And I've also added a little bit of uh, well, competition training. Um, what we're going to do is we have a few clips of a few students preparing for this week's uh, competition, King of the Beach. It's no gi and a gi competition, but mostly we focus on you know getting aware of how the points work uh, and making them aware of the strategy a bit. So um, yeah, that's what we're going to talk uh, about a little bit. I uh, hope you guys like it and don't forget to share and leave a comment of course and see you all next week. Oh, by the way, a uh, little reminder, the next two weeks the Head Academy is going to be closed due to maintenance. So if you want to drop by, um, well it's not going to work in Hadel, so text me or send me a message if you, uh, if you want to drop by. So uh, we start from uh, a position by choice, so not on the knees, but uh, you know the students just pick a position. So in, for instance, in this instance it's back mount. And uh, you know, sometimes if there's not a good control like here, you can just turn towards the guard and work your way up from there. Uh, good posture here from Robert John, and as you can see, um, the bottom guy, uh, you know, Sebastian was a bit um, late with reacting, so it was very easy to pass his guard. Now he's flat on his back, so it's very hard to get in a good position. Robert John is already working the arm, as you can see, setting his body up behind the shoulder. And body of the opponent bringing the leg over and just uh, taking the arm home nice setup there but I think if Sebastian moved a little bit more it would have been much and much harder so let's see how the next round goes um, yeah they start from turtle position okay so let's see how the how this goes okay so you know Sebastian is Work, uh, walking right into the trap he should have gone uh, behind the hip instead of walking towards the the head so now he ends up in the guard the arm gets trapped and he gets stuck in in a triangle you know that's um that's no problem that's just basic mistakes but you'll learn from it so let's see this is an interesting round yost against alessandro i like how in half guard yost is really blocking the head so alessandro cannot turn on the side he wants to turn on controlling the arm so he can't work the leg and now he's just very patiently blocking the upper body and working the leg to get a full mount and pass the guard and Alessandro is a flexible guy but because his body is pinned he cannot really move so Joost gets the mount he turns and he transitions to a back mount. and in this case he crosses the feet but that's that's a good thing there's no danger for an attack on his legs and therefore he can control the arms and maybe work for an armbar as you can see here but um, Alessandro got a pretty good armbar defense as you can see he puts the weight on the leg bridges bridges and turns so uh, then he walks in a triangle and gets caught there but it was a really good defense for the armbar so the head the, the leg that goes over the head well if you can uh, uh, control that one and bridge 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 it's very hard for the other one to find the correct angle to apply the armbar as was displayed here so we start from a de la Hiva. let's see where they go yeah controlling the foot nice so as you can see Yost moves forward does a knee cut there and uh, it's pretty fast pass but a uh, really nice transition going to turtle position and um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but um, his body positioning was much lower than in the previous round with with Sebastian. Therefore, Joost was in control and able to uh, to keep a dominant position. Foot on the hip, so he cannot move forward. As you can see, controlling the head, controlling the posture. Have to watch out for the for the wall. <laughs> Alessandro going for the foot. Nice. Joost is controlling his arm, so he cannot get the foot, and he'll probably catch the back. Yes. Again, he's on the side, that's a good thing, especially with his long legs, to cross the feet. Now he's much more cautious, you see, because uh, otherwise his foot gets trapped. So there's a lot of technical detail in this round, even more f than I can, uh, can explain. So his weight is back, yes, otherwise uh, Alessandro would do a head roll and, lo and Joost loses the position. So he kept his weight back, took him back, good, good control of Alessandro, not, uh, not giving a dominant position. 
Yeah, stepping past, knee cut there, boom, perfect. And then we already switched to the next fight. Okay, here we have um, uh, Peter and uh, and our guy from the team in uh, Eindhoven, Axel, going for a go-go plata. But, uh, you know, Peter is just keeping his uh, his weight forward. And the thing is, he keeps going for the go-go plata. You'll see it. But it's very hard from this angle because the knee is past the hip. It puts a lot of stress on your knee and your hip. And if the other guy just, uh, you know, stays where he is, doesn't create any space, it's, it's very hard to, to make the technique. So that's just what Peter is doing, controlling the hip. So Axel cannot really move. Yeah, and now again, he, he has to bring some pressure on the foot. Because again, it's very hard for Axel to, um, to get the technique. This is very hard on your joints. Uh, but some flexible guys can get it. So it's a setup for a gogo plata and maybe for a homo plata. But depending, yeah, there's a good control on the hip, I see. So being patient is the right thing to do here. And now move forward, move forward, move forward. And I think I tell him in this round to posture up because this is the moment to posture up and try to pass the guard because this is not a position you want to stay in forever. Posture up, bro. Come on. Yes. Oh man, he got cut again, <laughs> almost. So uh, I must say, Axel is pretty, uh, pretty flexible there. So that's why you know you gotta stay up because if you're in the guard position like this, he, you cannot pass, right? Because you cannot control the hips and the legs in a way you should, in order to pass. So he, the other guy is gonna work your arm, your neck, uh, everything, the sweep, and uh, I think he realizes that in in a second. So as you can see, Axel is still dominant. But it's very hard to get the submission, but he's still dominant. So Peter is uh, is considering his game plan. Posture up, posture up, posture up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's got the guard. He's working for a high guard. That's a good thing for Axel. You know, controlling the upper body, uh, not keeping him down. Now there's some posture. And let's open that guard and pass it. So at this point, the game totally changed. You see, now Peter is in control. Uh, Axel feels that there's some uh, some um, danger for passing and there it is already so that's how in a split second you know the game can change from controlling being dominant to uh, losing the position and now we're in half guard again good blocking the head you know a half guard in my opinion is a is a position uh, you can stay in you have a lot of control especially when you block the head you can work for the um, uh, Ezekiel or armbar or anything you know uh, and for the mount position so depending on what your goal is it's a very good position to stay in but you gotta have a, a, a good control but he has it here and there's a uh, there was an opportunity he went back he created some space that's why he went back in, in the guard position um, yeah too bad too bad so now he has to pass the guard again. So he's not controlling the hips, therefore he is uh, he's not in a in a position to pass. Now he starts controlling the hips. Let's see, boom, nice timing over there. That's a good thing. So now, of course, you wait for the control, and then and then you you proceed. And I think his ear got stuck right here, and he had to tap. Otherwise, he got a cauliflower ear. <laughs> yes. So we're in Eindhoven now doing the competition training and uh, well we're going to focus on the, on the points. So there was a takedown with a scramble with no control. So only if he takes the control he's going to get uh, the takedown. Yeah you see. So um, he's working for uh, I think a back control. Don't, doesn't get it. Let's see let's see let's see the foot is strapped. Was that from a guard position? Yes, he was coming from a guard position. So even when the leg is just trapped and you pass, right? So you try to catch the leg and you pass from a bottom guy and the top guy passes, you lose some points. So that's something you want to keep in mind when doing some competition, you know? Um, 
and of course you have to advance in position uh, to score points so it's not that the, the uh, bottom guy can go back and forth back and forth to score points so um, the only way to score points is to proceed in in position now for uh, for Felipe but uh, he is uh, he has a he has a nice uh, game plan because uh, he tries to work for control um, not go for the submission too eagerly w without you know keeping the control in the position so uh, yeah if I were him I would proceed to uh, an attack or to the mount because otherwise yeah the bottom guy is gonna work as well of course so let's see how it how it goes from uh, from here Ike goes on top reversal not a sweep uh, oh it was a sweep because it was from half guard sorry yeah you see <laughs> that's how it can go he came from half guard and swept him so two points for uh, um, for uh, Ike there so now he should be able to uh, to posture up same thing you see uh, uh, a few minutes ago we had uh, uh, Peter in the guard going forward you cannot pass like this so you have to posture up and then work for the pass because he's behind on points you know that's something you want to realize in competition how are how am I on points am I um, you know ahead in points or not so okay this is a dangerous thing going for the foot if Felipe comes up it's a sweep for Felipe you know uh, luckily for Ike he recovers the position so no sweep there let's see how he's gonna work he has to posture up or otherwise pass the guard Ooh, that's a sweep over there and uh, guard pass but of course he should have a proper control that was a submission already there Oh no, it was time, it was time, we fought on time, sorry, sorry, I, I think I missed the submission, but it was on time. So we go to uh, to the next round then, <laughs> yes, okay, uh, here we are in the next fight. So uh, I had to uh, to move the fight to the middle, because they were uh, very close to, uh, uh, to the boxing ring, yes, so they start from guard, and... Uh, you know, Kasia is a is a very competitive fighter, um, but the thing is, sometimes she uh, only goes for the for the kill, and that's a good thing. I always like that, but in competition, it's sometimes about strategy as well. You see, boom, going for the neck, going forward. Really like how how you know she goes for the for the kill. Nice. Um, I think this is a sweep. There, two points for the sweep. You know, because she came from guard. Um, went to the top position uh, on the cross side too high with the hips so that's what I meant with too eager for the submission the hips were too high so there was a reversal there let's see she brings him back in guard there's a very good guard game not easily to get caught yeah and uh, by the way we did a we did a few foot hooks in class so that's why uh, you see everybody going for it I um, I encourage that you know always try the stuff we did in in training and I think uh, foot locks leg locks and stuff like that is something you should not neglect in your training because uh, that's a part of the body that can uh, can be attacked as well so this is a this is a nice guillotine setup if I uh, my recollection is correct I think he's gonna escape so we see a nice display of how you can score an advantage in IBGGF points by the way we're gonna do the um, uh, Rich and Gracie Cup on the 29th of uh, September. Um, that's uh, you know kind of simplified rules. Um, you know you're going to be penalized on stalling, and there are no advantages. So that's a lot easier for the fighter and the referee. So this is an uh, an advantage because it was a good uh, setup for uh, submission. There was some real threat, uh, but he escaped, and it's time. This was this week's episode, you know, I was editing in the, in the sun, because this is recorded while editing. Um, so, I want to thank you guys for watching, and please leave a comment, let me know what you think of the vlog. And uh, I'm going to finish up and upload it for you guys, uh, so you can see this, uh, what day is it, it's, it's Thursday, so you can see it tomorrow. And uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Have a great weekend, and uh, thanks for watching.